48, 39 voor de winnaar Ernesto Hoofd. Once again, our contest is scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Introducing in the red corner from Sheffield, weighing in at 96 kilograms, uh, an amateur boxing record of 46 contests, 44 wins, two losses. Please welcome Sheffield's Paul Kirk. And across the ring in the blue corner, his opponent weighing in at 93 kilograms, coming from a rice slip, a pro-am kickboxing record of 17 contests, 15 wins, and the two losses. Welcome for Simon Dimitro. <laughs> Referee once again, Mr. John Blackledge. Stand by for action. Right, so here we go, Simon Dimitrio versus Paul Kirk. Simon, the European kickboxing champion, went out in the first round last year in the K1s. Paul, a big banger in the boxing, 15 KOs. This one's going to be explosive. Let's see which one of these young men is going to go through to the second round. Right, so here we go, the second round in the blue corner, Simon Dimitrio, trained by Tim Isley at the Cobra Gym, 93K, 27 years of age. 17 fights, 15 wins, 5 KOs, 2 losses and 1 draw. In the red corner, Paul Kirk, trained by Roger Toon, 96K, 28 years of age, 24 fights, 17 wins, 15 by big KO, 5 losses and 2 draws. I'm Malcolm Martin, and once again I'm proud to have with me Howard Hughes. Howard, boxer versus tie boxer. Classic case, yes. Obviously it's going to be hands versus feet. Okay, like you said, boxer versus Thai boxer, Simon Dimitri, the Thai boxer, Paul Kirk, the pro amateur boxer. And really, Simon had the right idea there, knowing the man's a good boxer, and he'd done his homework knowing that he's a KO specialist as well. The first thing Simon did was work the legs, which Straight he wouldn't away. have been used to, would he? Without a doubt. There's al already wet red welts on the legs of Paul Kirk, obviously not used to the low kicking of the Thai and the kickboxing. Yes, and this is something that Simon really needs to do because Paul will have everything above the waist. And you can see the way he moves away from it. He's just not comfortable with it, how it is. He doesn't know how to move and skip out the way of those leg kicks. That's right, that's brings right. his head forward as well, dangerously. He does have a height and reach advantage, but he's not using it to the... Yes, obviously, from his record, 15 KOs, he's a big hitter, and he will need that because there, again, it leans forward. Those kicks set him up, and his chin's out in the wind after those kicks. That's right. Simon a very good boxer in his own right, but he's using the kicks to work his way in to get to the head of Paul Kirk. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, Simon fought in the K1s last year, but went out in the first round, so obviously he wants to do better this year. He says he's injury-free at the moment. Paul, being a boxer for almost 20 years, trains at least three times a week. But at the moment, I think he's finding it very, very hard to come to terms with, with the style that he's in here. And you can see there, his hands are going down. He's almost trying to grab his legs. And the, Simon's working the legs, but I think the KO could come from his own punches. Correct. I don't think Paul Kirk has really much experience in the tie and kickboxing rules. Certainly not under K1 rules either. Yes, he's very uncomfortable when those kicks come in. He looks very ungainly in defense. And his hands suddenly drop. But that's the danger you have with a boxer. There, taken off his feet. And he really has no answer to Dimitrio's leg kicks. That's right. A very, very, very strong round for Simon Dimitrio so far. Totally controlling the pace against Paul Kirk. Like you said, Mal Malcolm, he has absolutely no, no sort of concept and idea of how to block the tie low kicks. Oh, and there you go. That's what I said to you, Howard. The punches will come afterwards. Once the legs are worked and the hands come down, Simon brought the punches up, but to his... To his credit, Paul just looked at him, didn't he, with those three big punches. Very good chin. Obviously, he's been a boxer, he's very used to being hit. So, um, you know, he looked at Simon there to say these didn't hurt, but I'm sure they did. 
Yes, and I'm also sure that if it carries on this way, by the end of the first or the second round, we might see a stoppage where Paul can't get off his stool. That's right, that's right. Very, very sore legs already in this first round. He does have a knee bandage on his, on his right leg, which doesn't help things either. Well, very torrid round for Paul Kirk there. Very strong chin, but I think perfect tactics there, Howard, by Simon Dimitri. worked his man's legs. He felt very uncomfortable with them, and he looked really out of sorts in that ring, didn't he? He did, he did. I don't think Paul Kirk threw hardly any kicks, if at all, in that first round. Again, excellent strategy by Simon Dimitri. The other thing for Paul, because he doesn't know how to block with his legs or move his legs, he seemed to have blocked his arms down to almost try to protect his legs with hand blocks, and that's when Simon fought him in the face cleanly with those three punches. That's right, the pain starts to come down towards the thighs, he's dropping his arms to try and almost block the leg kicks, as we can see here in the slow motion, just bending like, oh, massive sort of leg kicks coming in from Simon there. Which sets his head up afterwards, doesn't it? How it his does. hands flop down, it's almost like he's trying to push the feet away, and then the head becomes free. Fantastic tactics there by Simon. I just feel that Paul coming into this should maybe have done a bit more. Corners, 10 K1. seconds. Correct, without a doubt. A little bit more of the time, the kickboxing and K1 style Second training. Out. Might have seen him in round good step for this fight. Two. Let's see what happens in round two. Well, Paul is bouncing there on his toes, maybe psychological there to tell Simon it didn't affect him. And there, the very, very strange front kick from him. That's right, the totally out of distance. And Simon going to work straight away, still with the same tactics from round one. Going low with the kick, then up for the hands, and now he's into the knees as well. Yes, um, Roger Toon trains Paul Kirk. Now, Roger Toon, I know, is a kickboxer, I've seen him kickbox. But that was the first kick, really, we saw from Paul Kirk. And it, really, he just threw the leg out as if he was doing the count count. That's right. Fight! Both the trainers in the corner, men are both fighters or ex-fighters themselves. Tim Isley in the corner of Simon Dimitri, like you say, Roger Toon, a kickboxer in the corner of Paul Kirk. Fight! Yes, and Paul's still right on his toes, but I don't know how many more of these can he can take because he just doesn't know what to do when they come in and bang, that sets up the punches. He put one clean on the chin there. I mean, I said it before and I'll say it again. Kirk's chin is not in doubt. That's right. John Black is taking a good look at Paul Kirk. Can't take too many more of these low kicks. No, he works well to the body. There's no disputing with it the good, um, the good boxing technique. But, but the knockout ability, 15 fights, he doesn't seem to be troubling Simon. So his record suggests real power there, but what we're seeing tonight, to be honest, contradicts that. That's right. He has good power in his hands, but obviously the, the kicks need a lot more work if he's going to carry on with the K1 career. Yes, halfway through right. round two now, and Paul Kirk really Fight. struggling to cope with these low kicks. Very sound tactics by Dimitri. Paul, he occasionally comes in with that big right, but he does it when Simon's guard is right up. There's no chance of getting through there. That's right, that's right. Fight. I think we're looking at a very comfortable victory for Simon, but then again, a nice flurry of punches from Paul Kirk. Yes, as you'd expect from a boxer, a nice three-punch combination, works the body and then the head. But as soon as he gets in close, the defence is these kicks from Dimitrio. And then suddenly Paul's all over the place again. Right. Paul totally concentrating on the top half, on, on hitting Simon and then forgetting about the defence of the leg kicks that are coming in. And of the two, if we're looking at the upper body, Simon's the better conditioned in the game. Three punches on the chin of Kirk, impressed with this young man's durability. But as you said, he's obviously durable. And as you said, boxers are used to one thing, taking concussive punches to the head. That's right, that's right. Simon, I feel, is matching Paul with the boxing skill also, but also obviously has a huge advantage with the leg kicks as well. So all we can really say in Paul's favour, because he's lost the first round for me in a big way, he's losing the second, is you've got to take your hat off to his durability. Without a doubt, without a doubt. He stands to fight, all the K1 fighters stand to fight. Each other. He's limping now, Howard, he's limping now. It's the leg kicks that have finally taken him down. They've taken their toll. Left leg in particular, Howard, he's got a job to stand on it. He's a big guy, he has big long legs, but you can see from here, huge welts, and again, the bell just saves Paul Kirk. Exactly, Howard. Two. I think Roger Toon's saying it's all over in the corner, Howard. I think Roger Toon's saying that's it, it's over. That's it. I think he's going to save his fighter's, fighter's grace there by not even letting him out into the third round. That's right, it's all over. Yes, um, Roger Toon, I think he did the right thing. The leg kicks would have only got worse, Howard. I think a very good corner decision there from Roger Toon. Nice, easy victory for Mr. Simon Dimitro.
Ladies and gentlemen, red corner having retired the winner in the blue corner, Simon Dimitru.